So today I will persuade you as to why I think mental health is extremely important and why loved ones, our school systems, and our workplaces should be more understanding of this topic. Nobody deserves to feel alone when going through anxiety and depression, and I'll show evidence of the reasoning behind that. So my first main point that I'm going to mention is how school systems and workplaces are not understanding mental health and the severity of having those mental health days. I truly believe that there should be a law that comes out that allows mental health days in school and workplaces due to how overwhelming it can be, whether it's all of the homework that we have to do in high school, we have to attend about seven classes a day. Um, All of the homework and information that we are gathering daily is so much to take in that sometimes we just need a mental break. And as for workplaces, when you work an eight to five job, it's very difficult to not feel depressed because a lot of your job takes up your day. And when you get off work, everything's going to be closing and you're exhausted. And it's like this cycle where we don't have that time to just focus on us for an hour because we're just like dinner homework, bed, whatever we have to do before we have to get to bed at a decent time. A lot of the times our school systems will threaten us that if we uh, miss more than seven days a year by calling off of school, then we eventually have to go meet with the principal as to why we're missing so much school. And if things don't get resolved and you continue to miss more school, then they say, well, you have to attend Saturday school. Or maybe if you're a senior, we'll take away your graduation. But they don't understand that maybe we're just so burnt out mentally that we can't handle any more school for that day or you know whatever the case may be and eventually it could end up getting to the superintendent of the school district which is very scary because you know you can jeopardize your education right then and there and it is very it's a very scary subject and i feel like they need to allow um mental health days to be excused in every school system that we have in the United States, I feel like it is very, very important that we are taking care of our mental health every day. And as for work, uh, I feel like employers should be a lot more understanding when we call off that it's for a reason. I don't think anybody really calls off for no reason i feel like there's always a reason behind it even though we don't always tell our employers the reasoning for example when i worked at um, a hotel i was a front desk at a hotel and my mental health was suffering extremely bad i was very unhappy and very miserable and depressed and stressed out and it really affected how i performed at work i became very Uh, I wouldn't say lazy, but I wasn't being very productive. Um, I was very unhappy and it was like a cycle of where I would go to work, be miserable, go home and be angry. And I would take out all of my anger and stress on my partner because of how stressed out I was at my workplace. And I feel like it's extremely important that when we do call off, we should not feel bad for calling off to take that. According to Pierce County, writer Joseph Roch speaks on how the workplace is the most important environment to discuss mental health and illness, yet it is the last place we ever hear it being talked about. Employers are afraid of discussing it with a coworker at, or a boss. They don't want to lose their jobs, damage relationships, or risk future employees learning of illnesses and judging them. The stigma of mental health keeps them silent so a lot of bosses don't understand mental health a lot of them don't care about it they just care that your shift is covered and um, unfortunately workplaces should be focusing more on the mental health aspect but due to the stigma that people have about mental health a lot of people are afraid to speak out and that's exactly what Roch is speaking about in his article through Pierce County it is very important employers aren't taking that time to make us feel okay and make us feel safe knowing that if we do need that mental break we're, it's okay for us to have it instead we're more concerned of if i call off today i'm gonna get fired i'm going to get a write-up and i feel like that is not fair someone who's suffering from mental illness such as depression and anxiety should never have to have that stress on them that their employers just don't understand it's not fair at all to anyone going through a situation like that and i myself know exactly how that feels where i just was not feeling good mentally i couldn't even get out of bed and i decided to call off of work 
and my and I called off hours early for my boss to be able to find a, my shift to be covered. And he made me feel so guilty and so bad for calling off that I couldn't even enjoy my day off of spending that time for me to get my mental health back on track for me to go into work tomorrow with a smile on my face, knowing that I focused on me that day. Lastly, uh, Rauch also mentioned in the Pierce County article that he wrote that there is plenty of motivation for these workplaces, bosses to step up. Mental health conditions cost employers more than 100 billion and 217 million lost work days each year by addressing mental health issues in the workplace and investing in mental health care for workers employers can increase productivity and employee retention imagine if we actually got those sick days instead of having to call off how much they would save how much time and energy that they would save into trying to find a shift covered or even saving that money just like Roch mentioned in the article and so lastly another thing that she had mentioned was that high schoolers are encouraged to take sick days to rest and catch up on their schoolwork from home but taking a mental health day to care for themselves and mentally prepare to focus on more assignments and you know, just get their head straight is refused from the school. So if you're sick, which basically what's a sick day if you're laying in bed throwing up or you're just not feeling well, how we, I mean, that's okay. Yeah. But let's think when we're not feeling good in our head, how is it fair that we have to continue to go to school and continue to do all of this homework and switch classes all day and you know do so much when we just aren't feeling well mentally how are we able to perform our best and do our best if we don't have that time to really make sure that we are our best so to go on with my second point this one has to do with culture so when I first started going to Merced College, um, I took so many psychology courses. Psychology is my major. And one of my professors asked one day, we were talking about anxiety and depression. And one of my professors asked, does anyone feel like their families just don't understand? And I'm not even joking about five young Hispanic girls stood up and said, my parents think I'm lying. My parents don't believe in mental health. They don't know what it means. They think that if I'm depressed, I could just snap out of it when they say to snap out of it. Um, they don't understand anxiety. And I often feel so alone going through this. And I think that the Hispanic culture specifically uh, is very everything will be okay kind of way like just keep pushing it off so i believe that a lot of the traditional hispanics believe that if you just push it off you'll be okay you'll feel better and i'm not saying by any means that there's no other culture like this i come from a white family um my so a little bit about my background is i'm jewish my grandmother was born in Casablanca, Morocco. My grandfather was in North Carolina. My dad is 100% Moroccan. He was born in Morocco. My mom is 100% white. She was born in Merced, California. And um, my parents don't even understand mental illness. They don't understand it. And so I'm not saying that specifically Hispanics are like this um, because that is completely false. I'm saying that this is the main culture that doesn't really understand my parents um maybe not understand but they don't tell me to just push it under the rug and keep moving forward um and and i speaking from experience i am with a hispanic male right now he came from a very traditional background uh his mom stayed home um she you know didn't really work a lot she cooked and cleaned all the time um you know the dads were the ones that would go out and work and so carlos grew up my boyfriend grew up where, um, you know, you, you just don't say how you feel. You don't say how you feel. If you're not feeling good, you just kind of let it go. Um, and I know from, from, you know, his family that my sister-in-law is, uh, was very sick when she was younger to where she got hospitalized. And the only thing her mom kept telling her was, you're going to be okay. Just, you know, 
push it off you'll be fine and because she pushed it off and listened to her mom even though she was in severe pain she ended up being in the hospital for over three months at 16 years old and when it comes and so when it comes to mental health is even more of a touchy subject um because you know you don't always see depression and anxiety um i can I, I go to dinner with, I try to go to dinner with my partner once a week and um, I'm, I get so much anxiety when I'm in a restaurant and it just comes so sudden. I don't even realize it, but yet I'm so excited to go to dinner. But then when I get to the place that we're going to have dinner at, I'm just like, I don't want to be here. I'm having anxiety, but nobody can see that on the outside. And so I think that with culture in general, um, a lot of families are like, how are you depressed? You have a good job. You have a beautiful car. You have a good relationship. You have siblings. You have friends. Why would you be depressed? But sometimes we do all of that means nothing and we could still feel alone. And I know that from experience, trust me. And so to uh, go into a source that I found while researching um, regarding the topic I was just talking about, Dr. Melissa Ochoa wrote an article with Legacy Community Health speaking on how Latinos suffer from the same mental health that the rest of the country suffers from, such as depression, bipolar disorder, anxiety, obsessive compulsive disorder. Their perception of their ability to cope with these conditions differs greatly. Latinos are less likely to seek mental health treatment and they don't really have the quality treatment that they are expecting. Um, only 60% are likely to reach out for mental health treatment. And so um, Dr. Melissa Ochoa Perez also mentioned that when you are Hispanic, there is a little bit more of a road blockage to get the treatment that maybe you need or you realize you need and you want to seek out and get. But unfortunately, uh, she mentioned that undocumented, you know, individuals may be trying to seek help and they maybe have language barriers and that can really push things behind. And she also mentioned that Latinos work low wage jobs and they don't provide health insurance or they may be too grateful for any type of insurance in the first place to clarify if or what mental health services are covered, uh, pushing mental health to the bottom of their priority list. So a lot of the times when somebody in the Hispanic culture is suffering from mental illness, there's so much road barriers that you have to try to overcome in order to even get the treatment that you maybe need um, to help yourself. And that right there alone is extremely terrifying that people can't even see.